Does your rib cage appear extra pointy at the bottom like this, especially more so on one side? You might have thought that, well, this is just the way that I'm built and there's no way that I can change this. Well, what if I told you this rib cage presentation, known as a rib flare, is not something as purely structural. In fact, it could be a movement related problem that could be limiting your range of motion in your torso. And you might notice this when you're squatting or doing exercises, especially if you're someone who has a tendency to really arch your back. But if it's a movement problem, then we can improve it with a movement solution. That's what you're gonna get in this video. I'm gonna teach you why one side of the rib cage might be more prominent than the other, and most importantly, how you can utilize exercises to improve the appearance of your rib cage, and most importantly, help you move better. The rib cage has a tendency to flare as the body shifts its center of mass forward to help stay upright and reduce range of motion. When this center of mass shifts forward, you can see the back arch, but then internally, we see an increase in the abdominal contents moving forward. So if this ball were the abdominal contents, I'm squeezing the back, pushing them towards the front. And there's a bias of air to be more distributed into the lower portion of the lungs for the same reason. Well, what if this is happening only on one side? Well, if it's only happening on one side, that's because there is a rotational element that is happening in the rib cage. If you notice, when I move the left side of the lower rib cage more forward, the right side of the rib cage rotates backwards. If you look at this from the bottom up, if I do that same thing where I flare the ribs forward on the left, you can see that the entire spine in the rib cage rotates to the right. And guess what, folks? This is actually quite normal. According to these three studies right here in normal subjects, no pain, no major scoliosis, nothing like that. Everyone based on internal and organ anatomy has a rightward rotation about their spine. And that's one reason why it's quite common for the left side of the rib cage to be flared more forward compared to the right. It has to do with your body dealing with having asymmetrical internal organs. Although less common, the right side of the rib cage can also be flared comparison to the left, but usually what that is is that's because the whole body has a tendency of orienting or turning as a unit more so towards the left. Put simply, the reason why your rib is flaring on one side is because your body has more range of motion to turn in one direction. And that direction is away from the rib flare. So if I'm flared on the left, I have more right rotation. And if I'm flared on the right, I might have more left rotation. So does that mean if the ribs are flared on one side, do I just crank them back the other way? No, the way ribs move is through breathing in and out. And so if you just turn or force the rib cage in one direction, you're not gonna get a lot of the segmental motion between the rib cage. And that's gonna limit how much mobility and rib flare change you're actually gonna get. So in order to really improve an asymmetrical or an uneven rib flare, we have to not only drive rotation back towards where the rib flare is, but we also have to utilize breathing to change the dynamics of the rib cage, and that will lead to long-term improvements in the rib flare. Let's head over to the gym and I'll show you exactly how to do it. Now, the most important key with all of these exercises is the way you're breathing, because remember, the way we get the ribs to move is by breathing in a specific manner that allows us to drive that rotation. To lie on your back with your feet flat. Now, in terms of your hand contact, what I would do is I would take your hands and you're gonna put them just below your belly button because when we're breathing with this strategy, our focus is to make sure that the ab wall gets smaller and then the lower rib cage gets smaller. That's what's gonna reduce the flare. You're gonna go silent in through the nose. Imagine Michael Myers from the Halloween movies is close by, but you have to do this exercise like so. Did you hear it? Exactly. Once you've done that inhale, then you're gonna do a soft, slow, open mouth exhale because you need to move a little bit more air than you typically would during just normal everyday breathing. When you're exhaling, you wanna think about the ab wall getting smaller, almost dropping down to the ground, but not like sucking it in or doing a drawn maneuver. And then after a few breaths, you'll start to notice that the ribs will become less flare because it's getting pulled slowly down and getting smaller as well. 
it's going to look like this. Silent in through the nose. Soft exhale through the mouth. Focus right here on the lower abs and then watch the lower ribs. So you're going to see the lower ab wall gets smaller, followed by the rib cage. That breathing strategy is going to apply to every exercise I show you, but it's very easy for people to screw it up. Here are some of the common errors that people will make when breathing in that fashion. The first mistake that people make is they force the rib cage down just like that, as opposed to exhaling and making it smaller. Forcing the ribs down is an issue because you're not really changing the dimensions of the rib cage. You're just changing its location in space. That's not going to get you your rotation back. In a similar vein, people will end up exhaling forcefully through the mouth, which also forces the ribs down like so. Again, that's not going to get the ab wall smaller. That's not going to get the lower rib cage smaller. That's going to keep your ribs flared. You'll also see people brace their abs. If the abs are braced, then you can't get the natural movements that should occur during the inhalation and the exhalation. We want to stop that. The other errors involve not exhaling enough. Sometimes if you are going too easy on the exhale, you won't see the ab wall get smaller and you definitely won't see the lower rib cage get smaller. So you have to get enough air out that you're getting some movement in this area. If your inhale is too forceful, what will end up happening is you'll lose abdominal tension and the ribs will lift up as a unit because a lot of your accessory breathing muscles, think neck muscles and chest muscles, are pulling the rib cage upward, contributing to the rib flare. The big keys are silent in through the nose, soft exhale through the mouth, yeah, lower abs smaller, eventually lower ribs smaller. With that breathing sequence in mind, let's now apply that same concept to some exercises that can specifically reduce the uneven rib flare. The first move that combines the breathing we discussed before with improving rotation is what I call the crime scene pose. Whatever side has the rib flare, you want that arm and that leg out. So if my left rib is flared, I'm gonna start by putting my right leg out just like this, not too high up, right about here. And then my right arm, the elbow crease is gonna be about eye height. My free arm is gonna be palm up just like so. My head is gonna be looking towards the elbow crease. Now from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gently press my inner elbow down into the ground, about a two out of 10 effort. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the inner knee. Do the same breathing sequence that we went over earlier in the video, silent in through the nose, Nice, soft, slow exhale. Do three to five rounds of five breaths with that move twice a day. If it's getting easy and you notice that the ribs are slowly coming back, but not enough, the way you progress it is by first going to the other side. So once I've mastered the right arm up and the right leg out, I'm gonna switch to the other side because that's gonna rotate me more to the left. Same elbow pressure, same breathing. If that's easy and you want to make it more challenging, you can switch to an offset frog pose. If my left ribs are flared, I'm going to first elevate the right side. And the reason why that is because it's going to be less rotation to the left. I want to get good at this before I push to the end range. Your setup is going to be similar to the crime scene pose. What I'm going to do this time though is I'm going to have a very wide stance with my legs and I'm going to make sure that my hips are just a little bit ahead of the knees like this. Go down to forearms. I want my hands kind of touching and then my legs and my feet are also going to touch just like this. First thing you're going to do is you're going to glance up at the fingertips. Pretend you got to look at your fingertips, but you don't want anyone to notice. So you don't want to be like this. You definitely don't want to be like this because if you're moving the head too much, that's going to influence how easily you'll be able to get the rib cage to move. Glance up at the fingertips, step one. Step two, you're gonna go through the same breathing, silent in through the nose. But now on the exhale, what you wanna do is you wanna slowly push those inner elbows down and you're gonna slowly move your chest away from the ground at the pace of the exhale. 
just like so. Now you'll notice I can still move my body a lot. The biggest mistake that people make is they try to take up all the slack and push to end range. What happens when you do that is people will end up crunching, they'll end up arching their back, and they won't get any change in the rib positioning. You wanna pace your torso movement with the exhale. Slow, like a sloth who's trying to move through honey. Then on that next breath cycle, hold position on the inhale, don't sag. You can exhale and slowly try to move further. Same thing, three to five rounds of five breaths. If it's easy and then you kind of hit a wall in terms of how much your ribs move, you simply switch and do the other side. Once those moves have gotten easy, it's time to progress to something that drives even more rotation but prevents the ribs from flaring as you do it. For this, I like rolling. So the first roll that I'm gonna show you is a side-lying same connect roll. In terms of which side to do, let's say, again, my left rib cage is flared. I'm gonna take a yoga block and I'm gonna put it between my left knee and my left elbow. You don't want it too low, so I don't want it here. It's gonna be up on the top, just like this. What that's gonna do is when I press and I squeeze the yoga block gently, again, about two to three out of 10 effort, it engages the abdominal muscles, which prevents the ribs from flaring. I'm gonna get that pressure and I'm gonna move my arm and leg down slightly, just like that. The free hand, in this case the right, is gonna grip the opposite rib cage like so. When you do the roll, you wanna think about your nose, chest, and zipper all moving together, and you're gonna to roll to your back completely on the inhale like this. Notice my leg stayed relaxed, my arm and my leg are still in place. On the exhale, I'm gonna go back to the start. Ways people will screw that up is by moving the arm and leg like this, or you'll see the head and the torso rolling ahead of the pelvis. We want it all to roll together, just like this. Another way people screw that roll up is they'll end up digging really hard with the down leg. You don't want that, you want most of the roll to come from the torso. If that starts getting easy, you can make the distance between your elbow and the knee shorter by changing the dimensions of the yoga block, each one should become more difficult. Perform that roll three sets of 10 into the direction of the rib flare. Now, if that one gets easy, you can progress it to a cross connect roll. And in terms of the direction that I'm rolling, it's gonna be the same. If my left rib cage is flared, now I'm gonna rotate from my back to the left. The left elbow, and this time the right knee are gonna be contacting the yoga block together you don't wanna be up like this, you're gonna reach them both down like so. Get a gentle squeeze on the block so you feel the abs working. Free hand is gonna grip the rib cage. I would cheat the pillow or the pad this way. Same song and dance, nose, chest, zipper, all roll together. Inhale, roll to the left this time. I'm lying completely on my side. Exhale, bring it up. Same thing, if that gets easy, make the distance between the elbow and the knee shorter. Just like with other rolls, perform three sets of 10 going into the direction of the rib flare. Now you might've gotten some nice changes with those moves, but it might be that your ribs still flare when you're standing after you've done this for some time. If that's you, then you'll wanna do an activity that's more intense that can drive that rotation. For that, I like a landmine press. Now the big key with this exercise is the leg position. So whatever side your rib flare is on, you want that leg back. So if I have a left rib flare, my left foot's gonna be back, my right foot's gonna be forward because this rotates me into the rib flare. Now I'm gonna take the landmine, I'm gonna go same side on this one as the back leg. Your setup, you wanna look to the horizon first. If you look down, you're gonna end up rounding and you won't be able to address the rib flare adequately. Look to the horizon, soft knees at the start. You want to shift your weight so it's a little bit heavier on the back leg, but you don't want to straighten the opposite knee to do it. You're going to go silent in through the nose, just like we did with everything else. On the exhale, you're going to reach the landmine up, but you don't want to lean forward. You actually want to shift your weight a little bit more back towards the heel, just like so. Silent in through the nose, exhale, Weight forward, body backward. Now, 
when I lower this, just so I can maintain lower rib cage and ab positioning. I'm gonna inhale, reach with the opposite side, exhale, get even more heel heavy on that back leg without the foot coming up. And there you have it, folks. That's why some people can have a rib flare on one side of their body, and most importantly, what you can do to reduce it so you can move better. But maybe you're someone who's got a rib flare on both sides, like this person right here. If that's you, then you gotta go ahead and check out this video where I go into the nitty gritty of how to address a rib flare on both sides of the rib cage.